Hi, my name is Mike and I'm one of the educational consultants here at the Profs and in today's video I get to give you my top 5 tips on how to get into the Part 3 course at the University of Cambridge. Now often when you go online this comes with two names depending on whether you've been at Cambridge in your undergraduate or not. So if you've been at the University of Cambridge as part of your undergraduate degree, you would be awarded an MMAP upon completion of the part three. But otherwise, if you were like me, who's been a graduate of this course in the past, you would end up getting an MAST in mathematics. Now generally every year, approximately, there are about 800 external applicants that make an application for this course. And 310 of those get an offer back upon condition of getting very, very top grades at their university. As such, only about 160 of those students actually get an offer to join onto the course, which equates to about a 20% admissions rate for external candidates. If you compare that with our success rate at the profs, what we offer is something that is four times more than that, about 92%, uh, which is far better in terms of your chances of getting into Cambridge. With that in mind, and with our combined expertise, as well as my own experience in this area, here are my top five tips on how you can make the best application possible for this course. Now my first tip actually into getting into Cambridge is making sure you know why you want to do a degree at Cambridge and what you're going to do with it afterwards. It is no surprise that if you're going in for Oxbridge, it's an incredibly rigorous course. In fact, the part three course is seen to be the most rigorous mathematics course in the world. And again, I can say from experience, working Monday to Saturday with lectures, it is no small, small feat to actually achieve such a degree. So when you're actually writing your application, you need to give a very, very good reason as to why you want to get in. You want to show that you're incredibly passionate about mathematics. Mathematics is always what you have wanted to do for ever since that you've, you've been studying it at school. You want to use everything within your sort of own experience to show that you are the perfect candidate for going for this degree. And a large part of that comes from passion. Now, as something that really, really helps you with this as well is having a good idea of what you want to do after this degree. The University of Cambridge is a very heavy research intensive university and as such, it's no surprise you get a lot of people that want to go into becoming lecturers or professors one day after they've completed a PhD. And if that's you, talk about it as part of your application. This is certainly something in the past that I was interested in doing. I wanted to be able to teach mathematics at a university level. And so it was a definite thing for me to talk about as part of my personal statement. So make sure that you absolutely understand why you want to go to Cambridge. You're going for the right reasons and you have a plan of what you want to do afterwards. If it's not academics, think of a five year plan to maybe add to that which really, really heavily depends on you having gone to Oxbridge in the past. And this is one of the biggest things that you will need to be able to write about as part of your application. Now, my second tip at getting onto the part three course at Cambridge is making sure that you have the best possible academic record that you can achieve in your undergraduate degree. Now, there's a temptation that when you actually start your undergrad degree, oh, the first year doesn't count or is significantly less than your other years. But actually, if you want to go for Cambridge or even Oxford, you need to start thinking early about how you can actually have impressive grades when you actually get to your final year and you're actually showing interest as part of the course. What you want to be doing is making sure that you're attending every single class. You want to be trying to get a first in every single module, if possible, or close to. And you want to make sure as well that the research project is something that you're incredibly passionate about and you have a lot to be able to discuss with that as part of your personal statement. Another thing that can actually help to sort of boost your academic record is a really, really good reference letter from your personal teacher or from your director of studies or even maybe your project supervisor. What they can do is they can speak for your academic ability and they can actually say how intelligent you are. There are even some applications on a case by case basis, which actually say we don't just require a first from you because it's so competitive. We need you to be within the top 10% of your cohort. 
So it's absolutely crucial that when you are actually going in for your application, you want to start off being perhaps the best in your year group in order to be considered for this course. And another thing that is definitely gonna help you be considered for this is maybe taking some extra certifications. There's a lot of things that the University of Cambridge assumes that you already know before starting, and they'll be very heavily impressed if you've made the extra effort to do perhaps wider reading on topics that are actually compulsory as part of the course that maybe your university doesn't offer. And actually getting an additional certificate from a prestigious university will certainly not hurt your chances. Now, before I move on to the next tip, I do want to say that if you want to boost your chances by at least four times as much as you would do without the help of someone like myself or one of our many professionals on the team, then please get in contact with us as soon as you can using the link in the description below. My next tip to actually creating the best application you can for the part three course is make sure that you have secure ways of sorting out your funding and definitely investigate your scholarship choices. If you have a particular college in mind, sometimes they offer particular scholarships depending on what your background is, demographically speaking, and there are other colleges that perhaps look at your background based on your gender, where you come from, uh, actually how much experience you've had before in the past with a particular subject. So there it's always, always time for you to keep checking with scholarships that are available. Now, and in order to get a successful application for this course, you need to complete what is called a financial undertaking form that details proof that you will be able to fund yourself at university. And this is something that everybody has to do as part of their application. If you're like me, you didn't necessarily fit into the bubble of actually fitting into that scholarship criteria, what you would want to do is make sure that you have part-time work early on and save, save, save. Um, this is something that I did and I actually was able to combine that with relevant work experience that looked really good on my application. So for example, I worked as a teaching assistant for many different maths modules um, across different modules for second year mathematics students. I also worked at a local secondary school for, as a project supervisor where I helped sixth formers learn how to engage in research. Not only was I earning money at the time, but I was also adding to relevant experience as part of my CV, and I was also adding to the overall narrative that eventually I wanted to perhaps go into professional research or become a lecturer or professor within the field. My next tip for actually creating the best application you possibly can is choose an application stream and commit to it. Now, as part of your application, you choose one of four application streams. That includes applied mathematics, pure mathematics, mathematical statistics, and theoretical physics. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to actually be securely studying those things whilst you're doing the part three. In fact, there's a total around about 75 different modules that you could possibly choose. So actually, your choices of modules are quite big. But what you want to do is make a very, very strong case for why you want to go for that application stream. You see, for each stream, there are two admissions officers that look at your statement. And if, for example, you've written something for statistics that's better for the theoretical physics aspects of things, there is a chance that they may pass that over, but what that will do is it wastes time whilst the space for this course has already perhaps been given out to somebody else. And we don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure that once you've chosen your application stream, you've actually chosen it for the right reasons. We want to see evidence, for example, if you've chosen theoretical physics, that you really, really love quantum field theory or general relativity, and talk about perhaps some of the subject material that is on the course. With Cambridge being so well-renowned, a lot of their online lecture materials are readily available for many, many different people to find um, through the works of lots of different students and some very, very kind professors. So make sure that you really try to make some kind of a relation with what you enjoy to what courses are on offer at Cambridge. Um, and that will really, really show that you are actually truly engaged with your application stream. It will show that you're really, really serious about your application. You're not just going to Cambridge in order to get the Cambridge seal of approval like perhaps other people might wish to do. You're going there for very serious reasons and you want to make your experience there count.
Now my final tip is a little bit of an unusual one and it's to show an active engagement in extracurricular activities. Now it is unusual because we don't really talk about it as much as we do sort of your academic interests, your passion for research, your engagement with your subject um, in your personal statement. But it's still really important to mention. Um, not only does it show perhaps that you're not a robot, you are a human applying for this course, it also shows perhaps that you have a competitive edge to you. It's particularly good if you've gone into extracurricular activities and you've done very well. So for example, if you are on a hockey team and you've played nationally and won an award for that, definitely put that down. It shows that you're striving for greatness and a lot of the culture surrounding Cambridge is very much competitive and you want to sort of be the best that you could possibly be in many different facets. Um, you could say the same thing for music, or you could say the same thing for debating. Debating at Cambridge is very, very, very popular and very famous. And sometimes you might hear about um, in the news the Cambridge Union having very uh, popular and celebrity speakers coming in in order to express their views on different things. So we want to see some kind of engagement with those activities that might express how you might engage with student life at Cambridge. Uh, and that is a really important aspect of things as well as the studies. On top of that, you can talk about your volunteering experience too. This definitely does not hurt your application in, in any way. We do want to see some engagement with the community as well. We want to be able to see how you might want to use the skills you develop to perhaps better the world uh, in some way or another. So it never really hurts your application to include some volunteering experience too. So those are my five top tips of getting onto the part three course at the University of Cambridge. Now, if this is something that you're interested in and you need a little bit of help and you want perhaps the help of somebody like myself or one of the other people on the team, um, myself being somebody who's already graduated from this course in the past, then please take a look at the description below um, to find a link where you can get more information for our services. And we've also got some stuff on screen as well where you can find even more.